Und damit kann es weitergehen mit Let's Play Fake Renora. Wir sind hier immer noch in unserem schönen Event und äh, machen nun hier weiter. Beim letzten Mal haben wir etwas von dieser großen Auktion gehört, wo ja ein äh, Blatt äh, hier versteigert wird, welches äh, zu dem großen Drachen schlechter Siegfried gehört, den wir nicht unbedingt brauchen. Und äh, dieses äh, soll hier versteigert werden und äh, drei Magier sind hier nun da in der Form von Landing, Vlad und äh, Trunching. Und ja, an all spins der spider man in Section 3, my fleeting fate. Äh, ich meine übrigens Vlad, äh, Prince of äh, Landing und natürlich äh, Alexander. Und die wett einfach jetzt, wer davon dieses Artefakt bekommt. So, und wir tun natürlich wieder ganz cool hier unseren äh, in coolen Drinks äh, servieren, so wie immer. They say good wine makes good blood, but it can also be just as good at making bad blood. How many times have you heard of someone committing an energy breach of etiquette uh, while under this influence? I've heard majors have a way of neutralizing alcohol's effects, but I expect it only applies to the danger of extreme overconsumption. Once they're intoxicated, they are surely just as likely to loosen their lips as anyone else. Especially when speaking to ordinary bartenders like us. So why don't we start by bringing Alexander in here and seeing what we can learn from him? Though I would like to ask that you do the talking, if you don't mind. I stick to occasional interjection. I give it a shot. Na, Alexander sollte leicht zu knacken sein. Okay, okay. Sorry, spare of the moment. <lacht> Hat gar, gar, gar nicht zu ihm gepasst. Aka? I'm not sure I understand. You want me to have a drink now? Under these circumstances? Well, okay. They have a saying for this in China. You can't catch a tiger club without going into a tiger stand. In other words, nothing ventured and nothing gained. Those other two have been mages a lot longer than me. So, if I want uh, to get ahead, I've just uh, got to leap in without fear. Besides, I'm sure you two have some useful info of your own. Wir füllen ihn ab, man. Es klappt schon. So. Martini. Oder äh, gib mir eine gute Kube Libre. Here you go. No sign of magic energy, let alone poison. But I guess that's be, be expected. So what uh, do you call this? That is a dry martini. Ha, ich sag's echt, der Martini, cool. The king of cocktails. Geschüttelt, nicht gerührt. Seeing how you have an air of reality about you, I thought it would be fitting. Huh? No, we heard of it. That's because it has yet to be invented. <laughs> hey, that's pretty good. It's okay for you to drink, right? Sie ist eigentlich für mich minderjährig aus. You're saying I look underage? Ja, das war genau mein Gedanke. Don't worry, I'm not. I'm just uh, doing what I can. To keep uh, the riches of time at bay. Though of course I don't expect any other mage would take it easy on me. Just cause I look like a kid. Do you think you've got a good shot on the action? That's uh, what I came he here to find out. Can I uh, get an another of these? Just the information I gave you earlier, master. Well, Shansing organization is... Now I see. So three groups are dancing on a razor's edge. Well, damn. Now what do I do? I originally uh, contacted Diamond's group because I heard they were the biggest player here. But if they are that closely tied to the city, that's really gonna hold me back. Not to mention uh, that between the three of us mages, my family got the shortest history. Is there a problem with that? Mages are all about passing power down through generation. My family only been at it for 300 years. But those who have families that go back 500 or 700 years. That said, my magecraft is pretty well suited to combat. So that would tip the scales in my favor. Well suited to combat. Yep, you know about centaurs, right? The legendary half-human, half-horse creatures. Yeah, sure do. I'm sure they were incredible fast, but that's not the only reason they were so strong. No, they were strong because they focused all of their attention on pinpoint precision with their arrows, even while running at those incredible speeds. Concentration is key. 
not just the mage craft, but in everything. If people could concentrate like a center, it would improve their abilities tenfold across the board. Even if you don't have to a lot of magical energy to work with, if you focus, you could squeeze every last drop of you right into your magical circuit. I don't know what you're talking about, but it sounds impressive. Haha, <laughs> don't worry, you'll see soon enough. Anyway, you're going to pump the other mages for information too, right? I'm sure would appreciate it if you let me in on what you learn too. No, that is my name from the A mage who tries their hardest to compensate for being the weakest, hmm? That's an admirable attitude with which to go into battle. But it would seem to make him something of a poor ally for the Diamond. Also, here where Diamond actually the stärkste clan is. Left to his own devices, Alexander would surely do whatever it takes to win. But Diamond is more concerned with playing by the rules and reigning fairly and honorably. It may not be the issue in the beginning, but in the end, the disparity in the methods could very well spell the doom. Now then, why don't we see the, what Prince of Lundling has to say? So, nix nim abfüllen. Alkohol, huh? I see, nothing to fear. I wouldn't have no trouble breaking alcohol down with one hand tied behind my back after all. I'm happy to drink this if it will help me acquire information. Coming right up, sir. Here's the cocktail. This is called a silver bullet. Silver bullet? Indeed. That is what you use when slaying monsters, is it not? So it's a good luck charm, is it? Well, I suppose I need all the help I can get. Alexander I ca the first can handle but Vlad nee. Nee. Alexander I can handle, but Vlad is a formidable opponent. What if you and Alexander teamed up? That's a good idea. Drei Sterne und vier Sterne gegen mein fünf Sterne Vlad. <laughs> Kaza Kibelle und ihr beiden seid weg. And I'm sure Alexander would also prefer to go up against me rather than Vlad. But I don't think Chandring would go for that. Then again, I suppose if I want to know, I have to ask. And he does need to understand that Vlad the Third is our greatest threat. What's Count Vlad like as a mage? Well, the rumor is that he uses blood as a catalyst for his mage from. <laughs> Where did das gedacht, oder? Whether well, that's true or not, I do know that both his magical crest and his magical circuits are stellar. His magecraft may not be focused in combat, but I doubt he will have any trouble keeping up. As for Alexander, oh, imitating the centaurs, huh? If that's true, it would seem to have very narrow applications, but I suppose it would also be rather difficult to predict. Thank you for the drink, it was delicious. I think I will go see, so go see if Alexander would be amenable to working together. Hmm? What is my magecraft like? <laughs> How silly to think I would tell you that. The very basis of Magecraft is secrecy. That is as, uh, as true today as it was in ancient times. That said, it would not be difficult to figure out if you examined my magical lineage. Up to most action goes smoothly, for all our sakes. Alexander war bisher Gesprächsbereit, das ja. Alright, der just leaves Count Vlad. Though, who knows, if he likes to come. Ja, du kannst ja ein bisschen von deinem eigenen Blut geben, Moriarty. Dann kommt da. Vlad, my boy, man. Da steht ja, da tut mir die Hand durchstrecken, man. Ich gebe ihm gerade High Fives auf dem Bildschirm. Sag, my boy, Vlad. I have come. You have? How in the world did you convince him? Ich habe gesagt, es gab frisches Blut. It's simple, Bartender. Your purple uh, pupil there was unfriendly polite when he expressed his wish to entertain me. It was clear that he meant every word, and I intuited no signs of malice whatsoever. And so it is only proper that I accept this invitation, lest it reflect poorly on me as a mage. Now come and celebrate my victory, bartender. Very well, may I suggest the Bloody Mary? You may. I know nothing of alcohol, and it's intricious in any case. Our blood hurts him a good angle, Bloody! I see, so the bastard Prince of Lundling told you about my magecraft, did he? Even if he did avoid going into detail, I can say I enjoy having someone else share my secrets. 
Not to mention it seemed to attack on fair that he insists on keeping his own magecraft a secret. So go ahead and tell Exalan that this. Prince of Lundling's magecraft is based on beauty. He uses curses to entrance his targets and bring about their downfall. However, while that may work on ordinary men, it will have no effect on me. If anything, it is Alexander who may hope to stand against me. All that remains is to see how much money he is able to willing to pony up, but these men are no fools. They will willingly to make great sacrifices if it means gaining control of the city. Hmm, I still don't know much about alcohol, but I do like this brilliant lead color. <laughs> Once I've obtained the catalyst for myself, I think I shall bet with another of these bloody mirrors. Hui! Er tötet uns schon mal nicht, weil wir gute Drinks machen. Ciao, Blatt, ich vermisse dich jetzt schon. Well, he was certainly the most opposing, wasn't he? Though he also seems not to so much guarded as oblivious. Yeah, I go with oblivious. Alright. Now that we've got uh, more information to work with, let's see if we can't make some sense of it. First of all, while these mages share the name, body and personality with the servants, they appear to be... They are not actually the servants, I trust you already understand that. The blood third we spoke uh, to may sound like the same one we knew. But in reality, it may speak completely differently, even boorishly. For that matter, Prince of Lanling may not even be from China. But we perceive them as the servants we know and thus hear their words in a way matching that perception. The same thing uh, happens when we speak to them. Before our words can reach their brains, they are proceed to fall in the line with their perceptions. That is why we can address an ordinary mage as to a lot of it without causing any problems. Musste das hier erklärt werden, oder? I don't know how I'm gonna to keep all this straight. Oh. If you think that's confusing, wait till you hear this, this next part. Since each of the three gangs are working with one of the mages, you might think uh, there are only three factions at play here. But in actuality, there are six. Each faction is trying to obtain power and treasure to realize their own ambitions. And we are gonna swoop in at the end and take it all for ourselves. <laughs> My, you're just a cunning devil after my own heart, master, but no. As for my exact plan of action, I think that can wait until tomorrow. If I have read the situation correctly, something will happen at the auction. Ha! <laughs> das ist natürlich so äh, verwunderlich, wenn da irgendwas passiert, wenn da Vampire, Prinzen und äh, Nachwuchseroberer aufeinandertreffen. For the time being, we had uh, best take the opportunity to rest while we can prepare for tomorrow. Well, good night. <lacht> Wir könnten damit rechnen, dass irgendwas passiert wird. Ja? Drei Gangs, die ganz viel einfach hier äh, irgendwas äh, ersteigern. I can't sleep. Ich brauche auch ein bisschen gescheiten Alkohol. Oh, up already. It's not even daybreak yet. I just couldn't seem to fall asleep. I see. In that case, perhaps it would help if I told you a story from my own admittedly checkered past. This feels a little bit butchered me. I'd love to hear any story you're willing to tell. <laughs> In truth, man, much of my life was actually quite dull. That's that. What's that? Is it because I am a fictional character? I'm not so sure. Am I a fictional character? Or did James Moriarty truly exist at some point? Did the events that make up my past truly really happen? At this point, that is uh, really not so important uh, as distinction as you might think. All that ma really matters is that I am here now. My childhood memories are all rather healthy. There is only one thing that I remember from them. Equations. I remember their clearness, the beauty inherent in the structure, how gentle they could be, and how terrifying. It is thanks to equations that uh, one can determine precisely where a ball will land once thrown. I think back when I was just a boy, I would often ponder why no one else seemed to realize their appeal. Once I had reached what would 
uh, considered an elder data, wrote a book. The dynamics of an asteroid. But it never saw the light of day, thanks to the mathematicians who saw it buried before it took off. But honestly, I can't say I was surprised. I knew all too well how pity and guarded people could be. All the more so once they realized the terrifying implications of my book. I still, despite my lack of surprise, I was at a loss to how to respond. How then? Was I verify the equation steering? I remember chucking, uh, cocking uh, my head and thinking my, to myself, now what am I going to do? I didn't want to go my whole life without ever knowing if the equations was correct or not. This may make this sound uh, like a petulant child, but I simply did not like that idea. Not one bit. I was sure I could prove my equation was correct. I had to prove it was correct. So I decided to turn evil. Why? Hmm. I suppose I cannot possibly accept you to understand it, but no. I wanted to prove beyond all doubt how beautiful and terrifying my quotient was. So I swore I would do whatever I must to make that happen and eliminate anyone who stood in my way. From there I devoted myself solely to calculating one thing. How could I go about proving this equation to the world at large? And the conclusion I reached was that I must turn to evil. As an evil man, I would use this uh, equation to wreck high destruction up in the world. My next step was to form an organization. I mixed intricate schemes into the evil that typically tended towards straightforwardly simplicity. I provided wisdom and intelligence to evil that typically restored, resorted to brute strength and violence. I built up evil deeds up evil deeds until one day. That accused detective brought me to justice. What did you expect? A fair point. From my perspective, I thought I was just advising everyone to take notice of me. But once they started calling me genius, scum, moral, bankrupt, monster and Napoleon of crime. Well, I suppose I let all that go to my head. But regardless, Maxi, it will all that sad. I don't regret my decision to turn a life of evil. There's one, no, two reasons for that. I enjoyed myself immensely. Yes, I admit it. I am morally bankrupt. But in spite of that, or perhaps because of it, I can say without a doubt that few have enjoyed their lives so fruitfully as I enjoyed mine. It was grand fun to see people playing into my hands and even more fun to see them falling into my traps. Watching them stumble off a cliff or trip on a people or I have fireways coming crashing down on them were some of the greatest moments of hilarity I ever witnessed. Talk about chaotic evil. <laughs> yeah, this is what these are attribute. <laughs> Indeed. Of course, it is not stuff I, I was uh, riding high for the rest of my life. I met a man tumbling down the Reichenbach Falls. It was a miserable end, but probably benefiting a criminal like myself. And to make matters worse, the man I tried to drag down with me ended up surviving. I remembered how ashy grey the sky was uh, that day. At a time that was neither morning nor evening. Now, uh, how the icy cold water seemed to scream like matching gunfire. It's quite strange, really. Why in the world did I challenge him to a fist fight? If I'm merely a fictional, then I'm sure I did it uh, purely to satisfy the demands of the plot. But if I did actually exist, then I think I understand. I must have wanted to show him what a villain like me is truly made of. Alright, back to bed with you. Surely you must be bored enough uh, now to drift right off. Wait, what's for the other reason? You know, I don't know I didn't it. Oh, come on. Come now. Do I really have to spell it out? Because if it wasn't for my life of crime, I would never have gotten to meet you. Oh, <laughs> Now, now, don't be bashful. Even aged gentlemen like me are at times prone to sentiment. Alright, that's quite enough. Off to bed with you. Good night. 
Oh ja, die. Also, er das nicht deinen Schnauze eben, wird dir doch einen Pussy geben, oder? <lacht> okay, liebe Leute, dann würde ich mal sagen, äh, auch wenn das immer ein bisschen kürzer in den Parts sind, würde ich mal sagen, und wenn wir nur zusammenticken für heute, gibt es selber. Und am Ende gibt es natürlich hier den schönen Comment Code. Und äh, ja, ich würde sagen, machen wir jetzt erstmal einen kleinen Cut und beim nächsten Mal geht es dann weiter mit dem schönen Event. Bis dann, haut rein und wir sehen. Ciao.